humongous gnats. We've all had them, and if you haven't, you have, and maybe just not know what they were. They are a complete pain in the... <sighs> and here at the South, where it's warm and humid, and we have mild winters, they are pretty much a year-round nuisance. And to make matters worse, each female can lay up to 200 to 300 eggs in her short adult lifespan, which is usually between 10 and 14 days. So... Somebody's getting around. No judgment. And the larvae of these fungus gnats can wreak havoc on your indoor plants by feeding on the roots of plants and feeding on organic matter that's found in the planting media, which essentially can rob the plants of vital nutrients and result in stunted or weak plants. And of course, death. And so you might be wondering, like, what about my outdoor plants? Like, Aren't they about outdoor plants as well? And the answer is, yes, they are. But fungus gnats typically aren't a problem for plants planted outdoors for a few reasons. One, there's just a multitude of natural predators outdoors that help control the fungus gnat population. For one, you've got mites, you've got beetles, you've got spiders, and the list goes on and on. Additionally, there's just more open area and for them to roam, as well as multiple food sources. So today, I'm going to share with you five proven tips to either prevent or get rid of fungus gnats that works for both your seedlings and your indoor plants. These are things that I have implemented over the years and have worked for me. Are there possibly more options and ways to do this? Probably but I can only share with what I know. First things first, before we get into the tips, it's important to understand what type of environments that fungus gnats thrive in. The best solution to most problems is preventing the problem. Fungus gnats thrive in moist conditions where there is an abundance of organic matter, decaying matter, and fungi, hence the name fungus gnats. Tip number one, don't plant your indoor plants in compost. I'm going to repeat it for those in the back. Do, Do not, not plant, plant your, your indoor plants plant in compost. Outdoors, we love compost. I literally put it on everything. It's full of life and organic matter and microbes and nutrition. However, all the reasons why I love compost Outdoors is the exact reasons why you should not use it indoors. Compost is pure organic matter that is decaying. As, as it continues to break down, specifically as you water it, it produces fungi and fungus, which is great outdoors. If you are using compost on your plants indoors, you are literally creating a fungus gnat hotel. In other words, this is crack for fungus gnats. I made this error a few years back that had catastrophic results. I was fairly early on in my gardening journey and everyone was just talking about how compost was basically the bee's knees. And I thought, you know, why wouldn't I want to start my seedlings in compost? Like it has all the things. And over a short period of time, I noticed that my seedlings that started off looking lush and just full of life started to look spindly and shriveled until they turned into like these little thread-like pieces of nothingness. And at first I thought it was because I was either underwatering or overwatering. Then upon closer examination, I noticed that the soil, the compost, had been infested with fungus gnats. And just talking about it brings back memories. And I'm still, it's still a sore subject for me because I ended up having to get rid of over 80% of all the seedlings I had started because they were drastically infested with fungus gnats and at that point in time it was too later on in the season for me to start over so i was literally at the mercy of whatever the nursery had available for for purchase the next tip is to avoid over watering a common fungal disease for indoor plants especially seedlings is called dampening off disease now, dampening off disease is usually caused by overwatering and or poor drainage. It will cause plants to collapse and then they'll start to rot and then eventually die off. A lot of beginner gardeners actually mistaken this 
for underwatering their plants. And so they'll water the plants more, which only makes the problem worse. Another visual symptom of dampening off disease is a white or grayish fungus on the surface of the growing media and even on the actual plant. And fungus gnats love this stuff. And unfortunately, there is no way to cure plants of dampening off disease. And plants that look like they survived through will likely be weak or stunted plants. Additionally, it's important to note that dampening off disease is easily transferred from plant to plant. So it's best just to cut your losses and dispose of any affected plants. Additionally, if you're planting in reusable containers, it's important to thoroughly clean the containers with soap, water, and always add a dash of bleach. Let's be real, y'all. Sometimes getting fungus gnats is just unavoidable. No matter what you do, you get them. And that is the case for me. I'm here off the Texas Gulf Coast, and fungus gnats are just too prevalent for me not to get any indoors. So I'm going to share with you a few tips on how to actually get rid of them once you have them. So I'm sure you all have probably seen this before. It's nothing new, but it works. And it is using sticky traps. And these are readily available. They are super affordable. And all you do is you peel off this little sticky paper and you actually stick it directly in the actual plant. And so I am out in my garage near my propagation station and I'm gonna show you these in action and show you just how effective they are. So this is an example of one of my seedling trays and you can see that the sticky traps are littered with fungus gnats, which would have otherwise been in my seedlings. This one I just put out, so it's pretty clean as of now, but it just shows how effective these are. Like, look at that. And there's actually a fly on that too. Another method to trap fungus gnats and really any flying insect in your house is to invest in these insect traps. And so here's one, I know, gross. I actually took this one on my garage. I have these all throughout my garage. And the way this works is this actually plugs into your wall and it um, shines a light that flying insects are attracted to. As they get close to it, they actually get trapped on this like sticky insert here. So similar concept to the sticky inserts that I showed you in the containers. But what I like about this is that this is really effective at nighttime. I feel like I have like almost like a 24 hour gnat control system. So I actually posted this video literally last week um, and it actually got quite a bit of engagement, but I ended up unlisting it and then eventually deleting it because I felt it was important to make a few clarifications as well as reiterate some facts, as well as make a major correction on my part. One of the most important things for me and what I hope will be the core of this channel is that I always want to be providing you all with the most accurate and up-to-date information based on my knowledge and or experience. And so last week, there was a portion of the video that I think caused both a bit of confusion as well as there was an error made on my part in terms of the information that I had provided you all. And it literally kept me up at night. So I wanted to address that, clarify, and then share the error that was made by me. So in my original video, I mentioned that Bacillus thuringiensis, aka BT, is an effective means for treating for fungus gnat larvae. And that is absolutely true. However, there are multiple strains of BT and they each work for different use cases and I did not clarify that in my video. So the proper strain of BT is a subspecies is Relensis. So BTI for short. BTI is a naturally occurring soil bacterium that produces spores that's actually toxic to certain types of insect larvae. More specifically, BTI works to kill the larvae of fungus gnats, mosquitoes, and black fly. BTI is only effective once the larvae ingests it. It then disrupts their digestive system and prevents them from being able to feed. So essentially, they starve to death. The mosquito bits, which I referenced in my original video, does use BTI as the active ingredient. And like I said, I use these in all of my indoor plants. 
Um, if you are going to be doing that, just make sure you incorporate it in the soil because like I said, this does get moldy. So I wouldn't necessarily sprinkle it on the top. Definitely scrape it in. So a bonus tip because I goofed on my original video and I'll get into where I goofed is that if you have mosquito bits and let's say you want a liquid version of ET, you can actually make your own by simply soaking four tablespoons of mosquito bits for every one gallon of water. And then you can use that liquid to treat with every area you need to. And I believe this recipe is actually on the Mosquito Bits website, which I'll link below. So I actually prefer to use the liquid BTI simply because it's a lot more cost effective for my use case. Where I goofed y'all and what literally kept me up at night and I was like, I have to take that video down. And I did like that very same day when I realized this. In my original video, when I was showing you all the liquid BTI, I actually grabbed the wrong bottle and the bt that i was showing in that video was regular bt that is effective against like caterpillars um not fungus gnats mosquitoes and black fly larvae i want to apologize because i know i did link that same product not really paying attention where you could get it and so i never ever want to recommend a product ever that is not going to work the way that it is intended based on something that I have told you or given you misinformation. And so if you went out and purchased that BT from the link I included, I am so incredibly sorry. Please forgive me. And that's why it was even that much more important for me to make this correction within this video. I have since updated the links to make sure they're all correct so this is the actual bti i have two different sizes of it that you're going to want to use the smaller bottle is the two ounce bottles and this is perfect for home use the larger bottle is great if you are maybe treating something like a pond or even if you have a large scale operation in your backyard i think they even have larger um bottles than this but this is extremely extremely concentrated this larger bottle here you use about 2.5 milliliters for every 1000 gallons of water just so you have context and how concentrated this formulation is and you only need a mere six drops for every 100 gallons of water and most of y'all are probably like, girl, there's no way I need 100 gallons of this stuff. Don't worry, you simply can dilute one drop into one gallon of water. Now, technically, based on the ratios for the dosage, one drop should be good for 16 gallons. However, this dosage is going to be perfectly fine in a gallon of water for use around your home and things like your plants or even in your garden. It shouldn't cause any harm to your soil or your plants. And once you've done that, you are ready to apply to whatever area it is that you're treating. And so for me, more often than not, I am using it on my babies, on my seedlings when I'm starting seeds indoors. And I actually just incorporate it within my fertilizing routine, which I usually do every other week. And what I do is I just add some of the BTI as well as the fertilizer in a one gallon container and bottom water by pouring it into a tray and then letting the ceiling soak it up. So once you've created your diluted solution, you want to make sure you use within one to two weeks. I actually reached out directly to the manufacturer on this because I was just curious about the general shelf life once diluted. And what they told me is while the BTI is in its original bottle, there's actually a food source within this solution that keeps the spores alive. However, once you dilute it into water, they no longer have that food source. So in order to ensure that the spores are actually alive, and effective, you want to make sure you use within that one to two week window. I've just been cutting it off at the 10 day mark, but you definitely want to make sure you use within two weeks. I also want to reiterate, this treatment using a liquid BTI is only effective on the larvae of fungus gnats, mosquitoes, and black fly. This will not kill off the adults of any of these insects. The best way to fend off the adults is through preventative measures, like some of the ones I mentioned on, earlier on in this video. Also, let's say you treat like your seedlings for larvae, you kill them off, but new adults come and lay more eggs, you will have to treat again. 
Additionally, this isn't an instant process because in order for this to be effective, the larvae actually has to ingest the BTI. It could take 24 to three days for you actually to see results. And depending on how bad the infestation, you might have to treat multiple times. I hope this provides much needed clarity. And again, my apologies for the error on my part in my original video. Now that that's done, back to our regularly scheduled programming. So normally I like to end my videos in my garden, but it's actually raining and it is the warmest it's been all week. It's still in the 30s, so it's not the best day to be out. And for you all Northerners, I used to live in Minnesota, so I do know what cold is. So don't come for me in the comments about 30. Oh my gosh, every time, I swear, he knows every time I'm about to end a video, because here he comes and he's wet. Wet dog, wet dog. He went, oh gosh, you're shivering, you're cold. It never fails. Every time, I feel like he knows when I'm ending a video, he's like, it's my cue, mama. Oh gosh. Let's get Ruben at least. Oh God. Screw the chair, I guess. I hope you found today. <laughs> this is my life. It's, it's run by dogs. I hope you found today's tips useful and you can use them to either prevent fungus ash from infesting your indoor plants or you can get rid of them all together. Remember, sometimes fungus bats, it's just part of the process and they're unavoidable and you might have some casualties in the process. Like I have more or less fatalities and that's okay. You live, you learn, and if all else fails, you can just pick some plants up from the nursery. And if you have found effective ways to either prevent or get rid of fungus gnats indoors, and I didn't mention it, let me know. I am always looking for new ways to rid myself of these pests. I'm committing. I'm in the, I'm in the rain. But y'all already know the deal. Don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell and remember every black thumb ripens to green and it all just starts with a seed <laughs>